Uh, my name is Jim Daniels, and we are talking today about boats and about sailing. This is a standard kind of sailboat. You notice it has two sails. Sailboats are classified according to the sail configuration. This one with two sails would be called a sloop. If it didn't have this front sail and there is only the one sail attached to the mast in the middle, it would be called a cat boat. There are other kinds of boats. This is one. This is called a latine rig. This is a sunfish. I have a lot of these and this is what I use to teach people to sail. And this is another sloop. I'll talk about more about these in a minute. First, we're going to talk about the parts of a boat. I'm up here in the front. This is the bow. The pointy end and the front of the boat is the bow. Then as we go along, I'm going to go to the back of the boat, but the side of the boat here is the starboard side. Here's the problem. If I'm on uh, facing backwards and uh, someone is in the back facing forwards, and uh, the captain says, go to the left side of the boat, I would go that way, that guy would go that way. So to stop that kind of confusion, sailing has picked up terminology to resolve it. And that is making this the starboard side, the other side is the port side. So as you're facing the bow from the back, then uh, port is on your left. So left is four letters, Port is four letters, so that's how you can remember. And the starboard side is the right side as you face the bow. Now we're gonna go around to the back. This is the back end of the boat, or the stern. At the back of the boat, if there's a flat section, like there is not on a canoe and many kayaks, you call this flat portion the transom. On the transom is where the rudder is mounted. This is what the captain uses to steer the boat any direction he wants to go. So the, the rudder is controlled by the tiller. The tiller has an extension arm so that the captain, if he wants to, he can sit in the middle and he can control all the aspects of the boat from one position and one person can do the whole job. Normally, I like to try to get four or five people involved Everybody has a job. I find they enjoy it a lot more and it takes uh, pressure off the captain. Now I'm gonna go around on this side. Now I'm over here on the port side of the boat and I wanna talk about some of the other parts of the boat that are just essential. For instance, we start here in the middle. This is called the centerboard. When I'm out on the water, I let that board down because it keeps the sailboat from just blowing with the wind. There's no way to control the sailboat unless I have something to keep it from just blowing with the wind. There are two other ways to do that. One is called the dagger board. This one here, you just lower this uh, dagger board down right through the boat in a slot and it'll keep the boat from blowing sideways. Another kind is a keel. This is a keel. Uh, fixed keel. Sometimes these keels on larger boats will weigh thousands of pounds. Even on some of these boats down in the marina, they'll weigh up to, two th up to a ton and uh, they're very, they give a lot of stability. But you have to have something or else the wind will just blow you uh, with no control at all. Okay, so we started at the center board. Now this is the cockpit. This is where the people sit. They sit here, their feet are here. I like this boat because there's all this big cockpit area and I can put all my grandkids in one boat. This is the deck, all the upward part of the boat. So when the deck, the captain used to say with a great big boat, he'd say all hands on deck. They'd all come up and they'd stand on the top of the deck. As we go along, this is the gunnel. It's spelled gunwale but it, we pronounce it gunnel. And then below that, this is all hull. And the hulls have different shapes. This one is very rounded, and some of them <coughs> have a straight edge to them, and um, they handle differently. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the uh, superstructure of the boat, or the sails. 
Uh, these, I really like these sales because they're so colorful and everybody else likes them too, and so people invite me to things merely because they want the color. Now, sails on this boat have three edges. I'm gonna say them, but you won't remember anything. The foot, the luff, and the leech. Both of the sails have the same three sides. And the corners have, this is the uh, tack, this is the clue, and that's the head. The most important one of all of those is the luff, the front edge of the sail, because the captain will watch the luff, and when he sees this luff is quivering, then he knows that he's getting wind on both sides of the sail, and his sail is less efficient. So he either pulls the sail in to lose the luff, or he might even have to change direction. Now, in order to manage a sail, we use ropes. Oddly enough, on a sailboat, there are no ropes. Every one of them has a name. This one is called the main sheet. One strange thing is, this is a sail and this is a sheet. Normally you ask somebody to point at the sheet and they would point at the sail, but it's not. A sheet on a sailboat is always a rope. So this is the main sheet because it's the rope that manages the main sail. And I can manage that from in here with this pulley system. And over here, this is the jib sheet. Same thing. This is the jib sheet. It handles and pulls the sail. Now, I pleated that off over there so it wouldn't flap too much. But that would be the uh, starboard jib sheet, and this is the port jib sheet. And sometimes, you, you know, you have to move them. And when we do our crew routine in a few minutes, then uh, you'll see how that works. So those are the ropes. Now, there are two other ropes on the boat actually more than that. This is uh, the halyard. Haul the yards up the mast. So this would be the jib halyard and this on the other side would be the uh, uh, main halyard and those are called standing rigging because once I hike up the sail I tie them off and I don't mess with them. These other ones like the jib sheet and the main sheet these are called running rigging because they help you run the boat. Okay this is my homemade windsock. Um, this is for a uh, patio umbrella. This is a fishing pole. And that is a Hawaiian lei in cloth. However, it functions very effectively as a windsock. And I know that the wind is blowing out of the northeast right now. Now, I have over here my son, uh, my grandson named Henry. Uh, he has an anemometer. And he's going to read, he points the, the uh, anemometer in the direction of the wind, and then he can read the uh, wind speed. What do you get? 4.6 knots. Now you might wonder, what is a knot? Okay, we're going to talk about that next. I have never met, in all the years I've been doing this, anybody who knew what a knot was. So I'm going to explain where it comes from. Centuries ago, when sailors tried to position themselves in the globe, they had a hard time. So they devised the angles called latitude and longitude. Here's how it works. Here's the Earth, big globe. Here's the South Pole, here's the North Pole. The latitude measures how far you are from the equator. 90 degrees goes to the North Pole. Longitude measures around the other direction. Now, if you take one degree of latitude, one degree, out here on the surface of the Earth and divide it by 60, you get a nautical mile. Now, pilots and uh, sailors and boaters all over the world always use knots and knots per hour instead of kilometers per hour, miles per hour, or anything else because of the latitude-longitude system which is established hundreds of years ago. And that's why we use um, knots when we measure anything on the water. Here, this is what I call uh, in my table talk. This is how I train people to sail the basics. Here I have my wind indicator. Let's, we're pretending that the wind is coming from this direction. 
That means that the sailboats will not sail into this whole angle like that. It will not, though the, the sails will just not function in the no-go zone. But they will function just outside of the no-go zone. So they can't function here. Right now, that boat is mostly in the no-go zone. We'll show you that when we get to the cruise section. But right now, this boat is in the no-go zone. But as I turn it away, then the wind will help me position the sail. I pull it in tight, and now I can sail. If I turn more, I let out more sail. The sail operates in two principles, the push and the pull. The push comes from the wind just pushes on the sail, and that helps the boat go forward. However, if you get at the right angle, not only does it give you a push, but it also gives you a wing sensation, the same thing as is used on an airplane. It gives lift. So when we're operating anywhere like this, we get some wing effect. The most strongest wing effect is when we're sailing a directly across wind and the sail's out about halfway. There we get some substantial push and we get some very substantial wing uh, effect and the boat will go the fastest. When you're going downwind, most people think, well, that's the fastest when you're going downwind. But unfortunately, all you get is push. There is no wing effect at all. And so it's actually not the fastest way to sail. So that's... Uh, how you do it. So what you're doing is you're, you get out of the no-go zone and you pull the sail in pretty tight, then you let it out, you let it out more, and then when you're going downwind, you let it all the way out because now it's just a bucket, it's no longer a wing. Life vests. There are five kinds of life vests. Uh, and the lower the number, the more safety is in the life vest. A type one is for ocean going vessels. I don't have one of those. They're big, they're bulky, they're safe, but nobody wants to wear them unless they're out there and they're in real trouble. So type two is this. This is uh, Eve, she's wearing type two. Turn around so they can see. It has this thing in the back that holds, uh, supports the neck. These other two are type three. Type three is considered less safe than the type two, and you can probably figure out why. It's because of that neck brace. If Mer Eve was unconscious, then that might keep her head out of the water, where on these others, there's no guarantee. Le Levi's is for a little kid. His is small, but it's also got an understrap, which helps keep the kid make sure that it doesn't come off his head if he falls in the water. When I lift the, him up, because of the understrap, this kid's safe. Uh, this kid here, I hope, I can't lift him up, but he's got his pretty tight, so his vest will stay on. So these are type threes, this is a type, this is an infant three, and this is a type two. Type four, Henry is going to show you. This is a, uh, actually a cabin cushion that you can sit on, but if there's somebody out in the water, then you need to throw them a life vest. Often it's a good idea to attach a rope, Eve, if you'll hold the end of that. And Henry will throw the life vest. Okay? And hopefully we had saved somebody's life having that. Certain boats have to have a throwable, uh, depending on their size. Uh, right now, this boat is in what we call iron meaning it is in the no-go zone. You notice how the sails are blown by the wind and pretty much in a straight line right over the boat. That's called being in irons. Usually, a sailor doesn't like that. They want to be able to manage the boat and move. You can't do that in the no-go zone. So we're going to move the boat to the closest angle at which the sails will function. Actually, the wind is changing a lot, so I'm having to move it quite a bit. The wind is coming out of the north. You're at complete mercy of the wind right now. Okay, Levi, pull yours in, tighten it up. Now, as soon as you get at the right angle, 
a close uh, reach or a beat, we call it beating when you're trying to work your way into the wind. This is uh, what you have to do. You have to pull it in, pull it in more, Levi. You have to be real tight. There you go. Now, so what a sail, sailor does all the time is trim the sail, trim the sail all the time. It's tighter, Henry. Okay, so when you're on a, on a uh, close reach or you're trying to beat, then you have to pull the sails in tight. Now we'll move it some more and we'll go to uh, a close reach. Now we let the sail out a little bit more so we can catch the wind better. Now the uh, advantage of the main and the jib, the jib is a sail and it's also, a, but it's also steering vast amounts of wind right across the outer surface of the main. So it enhances the value of the main by redirecting the wind. So a jib is just really, really good. So these guys have now trimmed the sail for a close reach and now we're going to move perpendicular to the wind and we'll be on a broad reach. Okay, now we're facing away from the wind. Of course, the wind has died a little bit, but we're now past the beam reach and we're facing away from the wind slightly and we let the sails out quite a bit. The next direction is called a run and that's when we're straight downwind. Let me show you how that works. Okay, release all your sails. Okay, in this configuration, when you're on a run, you want the sails to be all the way out. In fact, you want them to be all the way out on that side and the jib on the opposite side, so you get the maximum blow. You get the maximum pressure. It's a bucket effect. There's no wing operating here. Some of you might have seen these sailboats have these huge billowing sails out in front called a spinnaker. They're, trying to, they're sailing downwind and they want to catch all the wind they can. That's what we're trying to do right now on a run. The same thing happens as you go around the other way, but watch what happens when I turn the boat. Okay, you start pulling the sails in. Okay, pull it, pull it across. Okay, you got to pull it across. Okay, at some point, the sails will reposition themselves to the other side of the boat. And then you have to re-trim them. You're gonna to have to pull it in a little more, Henry. You're gonna to have to let yours out a little bit, Eve. Okay, and so that's how you do. Your a sailor is constantly adjusting his sails so that they give the maximum effect and they can go the fastest. Everybody wants to go fast. And so right now, the sail's probably not very efficient and the main has to be pulled in quite a bit more. And then, okay, that'd be about right. Okay, that is how you sail. Okay, okay. I started sailing because my dad got me involved in scouting at age 12 and they sent me to some camp up in Washington State. I learned to sail and I got the merit badge. I was hooked. I've been sailing now for 62 years and uh, it's become my hobby. I own 46 sailboats, or actually uh, some of those are kayaks, but I teach hundreds of people to sail every year. And so I hope you will learn too.